I actually started, it started out, you know, both my parents was, you know, very into music, choir music and opera music and stuff. My father was an opera singer and my mother was a teacher. And um, so, I, so everything started with music, now, you know, it was music in my home all the time. But then I decided to start to play trumpet, actually. And I played trumpet for almost 16 years, I think. And uh, along the way, I found a guitar and I saw some cool things on the TV with guys with stars in their faces <laughs> and uh, waving the guitars and fire and, and then I started, yeah, I started, you know, just I want to try the guitar and then the trumpet ended up on the shelf and... Well, I, for me it was some similarities, uh, quite a few, but we, I didn't come from a musical home, um, but my mom was a teacher and she encouraged me to play an instrument. She really wanted me to play something. It didn't, didn't really matter what. So uh, like a lot of uh, kids my age, uh, which was nine at that time, I started off with the, the recorder, you know, the flute. And then <clears throat> I moved on to the trombone for four years. And like Ponte said, exactly the same thing. During this time, I found the guitar somehow. Uh, so I started listening to uh, like metal music somewhere after my 10th birthday something I don't I'm not I'm not sure exactly sure but you know how these things say go gradually and uh, I realized that you know playing the trombone is fun or well, it became less and less fun because I was listening more and more to the you know, metal music so I wanted to play the stuff I was listening to and you can't do that with the trombone obviously so somehow uh, I convinced my mother to be able to switch to guitar and uh, uh, it, it, it's just that's when it started. When it started for me, realizing that I can play what I'm hearing. Uh, so I started to to um, to listen to the songs and to listen to the, the musicians or, or the the, um, uh, the bands that I really liked and try to play their songs. Basically, that's what I did. So I, I'm more or less self-taught in that respect, which I think is a good way to learn how to play. Uh, learn how to, how to be creative because if you learn how to play other people's stuff you can incorporate that in your, your own style in, in the end but it also means that I don't have any classical training like I, I can't play uh, at all and even close to what Pontus does so I don't know any scales or shit like that so I play mostly by ear and of course it's much more rudimentary but my focus has always been on songwriting rather than guitar playing as, as a lead guitar player. So I, I, I'm, I'm much more of a songwriter. That's why when I pick up a guitar, I don't ever do any licks or, or like, you know, solo parts. I always play riffs, uh, mainly from, from bands that, um, uh, that, that I really enjoy listening to, like Accept, for example. Wolf Hoffman is, is I would say he's the biggest influence musically, uh, um, musically for me. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever influenced me as much as he did, guitar playing wise, I mean with the, the riffs and the, the musical accept and the way he plays his leads and stuff. Um, so yeah, so well, I found the guitar and started playing in bands. I mean, that's how it goes. And in Sweden, uh, I'm sure yeah, it was like this in the 80s too. Uh, for you, like, uh, it was fairly easy to find a place to rehearse. You got a lot of support from, from the local government uh, in terms of of encouragement and, and you know creating opportunities for you to to play in a band. When you started like third grade or something you were able to choose an instrument yeah. and yeah and you could borrow an instrument and sure. you know you, you had you know once a week or if you were you know getting better and better you could go twice a week and then they started bands and it was jazz, jazz bands and big orchestras and stuff like that so you know <clears throat> from and it ended now, but that, that was like an era in Sweden if you just took a picture over kids moving around. You saw kids with, yeah. you know, the violin, the flute, the trumpet, on the subway, everywhere. Yeah. You, kids were, you know, playing music all the time, so... Actually, I played, a, a, it was a Washburn. Uh, and the, 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 that was one of, the, I don't even remember because it was <coughs> one of my brother's friends that bought it and that was the Washburn that looks a little bit like a Gibson but they're, they not look exactly like a Gibson but uh, and that was actually the first guitar I played, yeah, electric guitar I played. Acoustic guitars has always been in my home but you know when I 
tried that one the first time and understood I could like start to play the acoustics. But that, it was a was Washburn that was the first step into guitar playing for me. I think. Well, my first, first guitar. Well, we had a. a it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had actually a, 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 a broken, uh, battered acoustic guitar, missing strings and stuff. But it, it, it at least made you being able to to do some stuff. And the first lick that I ever learned to play was uh, "Can't Stand the Night" with except this in, like one string melody thing. And uh, what, what Pontus was referring to is because I, I, I didn't know didn't know anything about guitars. I mean, I had no clue. So, but I wanted to build an electric guitar. So I built one in in, in the wood shop that you have in in school. And it took me about a year. But since I didn't know anything about electric guitars or guitars at all. I just took one of the acoustic guitars in the in, from the music class and measured the the neck and everything and uh, and I patterned my electric guitar from that. Uh, but I didn't know that uh, electric guitars have a much smaller neck. I, you know, I it didn't have Looks any. Looks great. But I wanted to make the shape great, so I, I borrowed the uh, the shape of the, the Wolf Hoffman guitars, the Gibson Flying V's, but I didn't make made them pointy instead. Probably because I was too lazy to to <laughs> file it. I'm not sure, but that's what I did anyway. Uh, but the guitar is huge. It's like this big. Uh, the head was also. I mean, it actually works, M meaning that you can take an one note and there's sound coming out. So the, I, I hooked everything up properly, but uh, uh, the the um, I, I didn't know about the scales. Uh, the bundle. Oh. Yeah, the, the fretboard you had to be really specific, like they had to be straight and I had no idea. So they, they look like this sometimes. <laughs> it's really terrible. So That's modern nowadays. Yeah. On guitars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I was very avant-garde even back then. <laughs> no, but, but anyway, it works, uh, but it doesn't play, you can't play anything on it, but you can make a, a note or a sound anyway from it. Uh, and also because I was so into certain bands, uh, I <laughs> that was my favorite part of the whole thing. I painted it white, and then I put uh, uh, the logos, or not the logos actually, just the the names uh, Kiss and Wasp on on the guitar. Uh, I, I, that was my favorite part because I got to paint red or whatever blue on onto the white thing. Well, Kemper, obviously. Yeah. For for uh, simplicity and great sound, I, I think well, we discussed this briefly before. I mean, the guitar techs must think it's, it's uh, uh, really easy to, to work with these, as as opposed to like five amps and stuff and pedals and shit like that. So it's really easy to hook up and everything, and it does sound great. And we done all the profiles, of course. Yeah, so it's our own rigs, sort of that we have. Yeah, I have profiled my Marshall rigs and with you know, all the boosters and whatever I'm using in my big rig. And the same with Oscar, we... Yeah, we used the album sounds. Yeah. And this, I think, is great, because that's been one of my, my the points throughout the whole career, basically, uh, that we sound very different. The guitar sound is very different live from what it is on the, on the albums. And I have never had the, the knowledge to, to reproduce it uh, before. I still don't actually. I rely on him, but <laughs> but point is now we can do it. Again. So we, we did the profile of the of the of the the album sound of the guitars, and, I, and this was a really really good sounding uh, guitar wise uh, album. This one we, we really hit it with this. Uh, so uh, for mine mine is uh, the small uh, 50th anniversary Marshall JVM. Uh, one what? Yeah, the one what the the small one. That, that I used that for every demo. That I, that's the only thing I just put, plug that in, and a microphone to the uh, to the cabinet, and that's all the all I ever use for demos. And it sounds really good. I well, think. Well, um, just to point out that we we actually started that was 2010 with Marshall when we started yeah. to work with uh, Marshall, and I've been a Marshall guy for all my life, and I introduced Oscar and said we, we should try it, and I know the guys at Marshall, so we got. And then sort of an endorsement, and uh, so it's still Marshall that sounds right <laughs> in the campers, and it's our Marshalls, you know, s that we used all the time. Using we didn't use the campers in the studio because, no. of course, we didn't want to have some fun and be the boy again and uh -huh. try out pedals and amps. So, 
But, but, but the thing is, it's so efficient just to take the camper we're using in here, we're using in here, and um, to have the same sound every day. It's no mics moving, it's nothing, it's the same, and that's amazing. This is our 10th, 10th studio album in 20 years, so we found a way that that feels good. To, I've never been uh, 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 like a, a jam kind of guy. You try this riff out and you play together and create something. That doesn't work for me really. Uh, it works if, if Pontus and I are sitting in the studio and fooling around a little bit with, with stuff, but uh, it doesn't work to write a whole album like that. I, I need the, the... because for me, when I start writing a song, I might have, let's say, a minute and a half or whatever. And then I go back and, and I play through that and I listen and try different things and to, to make those, the, th the things that I've already done to be the, the, as good as they can be and not just, oh yeah, this is good enough, let's move on, you know. So I spend a lot of, I spend about a month on every song from start to finish. Uh, of course that varies a lot, but, but that in, 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 on average I would say. Uh, and which means that uh, working, like going to the studio and put the songs together there, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, at all for me, and I, I don't think I think that's if, if when you get it, if you do it that way, you have skeletons for songs and, and ideas, and then you go into the studio and put everything together. Like uh, uh, let's say the first Skid Row album, I think that that's how they did it, uh, and it, it, you can create magic like that. It can be better than anything you could have done if you prepared. But there's also a chance that it will fall flat on your face too, and I'd rather be safe than sorry in this case. So when we go into the studio, everything is already written and mapped out how we're gonna, how it's gonna sound like, basically. <laughs> Playing live, I think, is why everybody gets into the business, or at least a big part of it. So live show, being there in front of the people, you know, looking out in the audience, and you see the, the look on the people's faces and knowing exactly what they feel because you've been there yourself, uh, you know, when you were younger watching bands like Judas Priest or, or Accept and, or, and stuff like that. So that's, that, that's for me, is the most gratifying thing about the whole thing, what we do. I, th I think it's, it's, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm the tech nerd in the band. Yeah, I am. And, um, Thank I'm, you for being there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but I take care of a lot of, you know, when we record. I'm, I, know, I know how to do it and I've been doing it for my life, more or less, since day one with a portable. It was a, a uh, real, you know, recorder. I had, we had a two-channel, an old one at home from the beginning, and then portable. So I, I've been go going forever, and it's a good compliment, you know, when we're in the studios. I can go in and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a, wait a, an hour. I have to <laughs> nerd a little bit. Guitar-wise, uh, we, uh, I'm and all of us actually play Sandberg guitars. So, um, and we've been working with Sandberg now for two years. Two years. It's actually two and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm playing um, like their California model. The now now I had custom guitars from them. So, but I'm 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 the Strat type of guy. I've been there all my life. Yeah, I, I got the. Um uh, the Randy Rhodes model, more or less. It's a little curved, but it, it looks, t if you don't look close enough, it's exactly the same, but, but it, it's actually a little bit different. But, but what I wanted to make it unique, so I'm, I've always wondered, I always like chains, in, in, uh, ever since I started playing guitar, basically. Uh, and I wanted to try to incorporate the chains inside of the guitar somehow. So I put, uh, or I actually, I didn't do anything, I just came up with the idea, but, <laughs> but uh, we put two chains and big bolts on each side, uh, inside of the body of the guitar. So it's actually level, uh, it, nothing sticks out or anything like that. And uh, I, I think that, that's basically my dream guitar, more or less. Uh, and my main guitar where I play all the time. But uh, uh, also waiting for Daniel, where is it? It's coming soon, I hope. <laughs> uh, no, uh, he, they're making a new hammer guitar for me. Uh, and I'm very excited about this one. It's, uh, the, I have one already, but it's, uh, it was a last minute decision. We made it in uh, the body in acrylic, which means it's, 
really, really heavy. It's just, it weighs like six or six and a half kilos or something like that. But yeah, so this one, I'm waiting for it. It was supposed to be ready in time for the tour, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, they can, couldn't make it. So I'm waiting for it now. Uh, I think it's more or less ready. Hearts on fire. Oh, in here. In here. But well, we got some uh, in the sideway, just some stuff going on as well. Right? Side fields, we, we, we do a mix just for saving, you know, if, if something happens, if whatever, you know, bad, bad batteries or something, you know, we have a, not, it's not loud at all, it's just there. So but, but it's actually really helpful. Yeah. I, I noticed, I've always been like, nah, we don't need it, you got, you got the inners. But yesterday, uh, there was, I had some problems with the, the pack. Uh, I think, there might be the cable, I'm not sure, but, but it, it, it uh, went out for a couple, in the first song I, or, or second song after jumping down and all of a sudden it was like I didn't hear anything here. But then I could rely anyway, it wasn't that, it wasn't that big of a difference, so I'm, I'm all for it now. Yeah, yeah I'm doing the monitors, so, uh, yeah. but uh, it's, it's a stereo mix, it sounds more, more or less the same in everyone's ears, different levels, but then I bring it up in the side field, so you can take your in ears out and then you have it's not going to be yeah really loud and punchy but you can hear what you do in plus we also do have some sound from the guitars on stage as well i mean we we do have the cabinets they're there for for like feedback, feedback and stuff, stuff. but uh, but i like when i my my in ears sometimes and they always when i get sweaty they pop out a little bit and then you get that you know, press it in but you still hear the guitars it's so hard to take the guitar up every time to get feedback from your ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's plus it's really painful for your ears when you do it exactly. that way. <laughs> well, I, I, could, I could live with the camper that I have, with the sound that I have, which is of course analogly uh, produced, but, uh, but I can live with this for the rest of my life. I'm very, very happy with the, with the sound that we profiled and the, the simplicity of the camper coming up. Yeah, I have to say the same. I, because uh, you, you, it doesn't matter if you're on stage. Of course, it's cool to be on stage with a couple of stacks of marshals and loud and everything, but in the end, you know, if you have your sound, it doesn't matter what level or if it comes out of a 4x12 four, four or you know the people that listen to it are gonna recognize oh it's Pontus playing or it's Oscar playing Be because it's the sound is still in here of course it's fun but no I could live with the, the camper for the rest of my life yes <laughs> it's, it, it's nice to have the Nightliner you have your own room, so to speak, you just pull the curtains and then you're all alone, more or less, at least you can imagine that you are. Plus, I really like uh, when you come back from the show, showered and everything, you have a sandwich and grab a beer or whatever, sit on the bus for a little while, then you go to sleep. And you don't have to get up early, you can get up whenever the hell you want the next day. Uh, and So that I, a nightliner for me, for sure. I'm with you, because I think also, without being, you know, nightliner, like Oscar said, you can you, you can choose you know times and everything. Otherwise, you have to drag your bags back and forward into hotels, and you know it never ends. And unpack and pack and go. No nightliner. Both have their merits. I think it depends really uh, on on uh, the circumstances. I think I, a club gig, you know that the people who are there. They pay pay to see you because you know you don't do a festival club. You know they they, they pay to see a Hammerfall show, so you know that they're going to be into what, what you're doing. Whereas a festival is the more uh, it could be bad. I mean good, but it could also end up being bad if people are more interested in checking it out rather than getting into it. And I think a heavy metal show is not something you you passively regard. You you actively take part in it and to make it bigger and, and better and for everybody involved basically and uh, so I, I would probably choose club gig based on that festivals are fun on, on the other hand because it's like uh, you get to meet a lot of bands you maybe not you, people you know that you don't see that often anyway anymore because you know you're on the road at different times and everything so as, as far as the actual show I probably would pick the club gig but uh, festivals have their, their uh, positive sides as well yeah, I think I, th I think actually festivals are like 
more backstage because you're hanging out with yeah. so many friends and everything. And and then it's you know when you go on stage on a festival, sometimes when you do a festival, you're like 12, 15 meters away from the audience. You don't even see their eyes. And then you come into a club and you, you can see the guy when you hit that chord. It's like you see the smile and he starts to see and you can see everything what happens. You get a direct response yeah. on a festival. It can take quite a while and now nowadays with the in-ears and stuff <clears throat> you can miss out on you know the, the audience response a little bit on festivals because it's so far away from ambience microphones and everything so yeah, yeah so, sometimes it's like rehearsing in front of a, a screen or something like yeah. a tv screen you can't hear what the people are saying or, or doing so I, I, I clubs for the response and you can you can you can catch the you know, the, the eyes of people like... It's much more intimate <laughs> yeah. in, in, a, in a regular show. And there's nothing better than, uh, you know, starting a song or, you know, sometimes we don't, Joachim doesn't introduce it, he just, we just start it, we play it. And it starts with maybe a typical riff or whatever. And I, I love the, the, you know, watching out, looking out in the audience and seeing like when you start playing and they go, goes to their friend, oh yeah, oh. It's, this, it's this one. <laughs> Because I've done that a million times myself, so I know exactly what they feel. You know, uh, and uh, those reactions are, uh, they make you proud, of course, but also very, very energetic and very happy. That makes, gives the, the rest of the tour, you get a, an adrenaline rush from that, for sure. We saw the writings on the wall when heathens ruled